Praise God. I'm going to get up because it's, I know it's getting late, but uh, everybody's just sitting here and I, I understand how you feel because we've heard from the Lord this morning and uh, whenever God gets up and talks to us, we need to open our ears and our hearts and we need to be submissive to his will uh, in whatever matter he brings before us. I know my prayers have been, uh, every time I go to the Lord, uh, before we gather together, has been, God, give us the truth, because it's only the truth that's going to set us free. It's, it's only his truth, not, not some man's truth, not something that we glean out of the scriptures in our own carnal minds, but the truth as it comes from the throne of God to his people. And I believe this is going out to his people, not just in this nation, but in North America, South America, Mexico, Asia, Europe, Australia, all, every continent on earth. And everyone that hears this word is going to be responsible to God in that day. And I just uh, thought of one scripture I just wanted to read real quick in uh, Revelation chapter 20. If you'll turn over there for just a second. Because I want us to leave on this note. And Phil kind of emphasized this at the end. This message is not to scare people into doing something. To making a decision. The message here is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Do you want him? Do you want to bow your knee to Jesus Christ today? Are you convicted in your heart? Because let me tell you, unless God does the preparatory work in your heart, you can't be saved. But if God's preparing your heart, if, if you are convicted in any wise this morning listening to this message, this word, then I say God is working in your heart. Yes. Yes. Because you wouldn't be convicted if God wasn't working. And if you're convicted and you hear his voice this morning, then there, God requires of you, it's your responsibility at that point, to decide what you want to do. And today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Because if you do, it's just going to get, continue to get harder. That's what's wrong with this nation. It's gospel hardened. They've heard the word for so many years that, I mean, you know, like, well, 2,000 years. I'm not just this nation, the whole world have heard the gospel for so many years that it's just, and not responded, not yielded, not given themselves to God, not seeing what's really true and important. Because of that, they can't receive the word. It just bounces off of them. It's the hard soul, the rocky soul. But God still has some that have tender soul. And you can be touched. But I want to read this scripture real quick over here. Uh, Revelation chapter 20. I'm just going to pick it up in verse 11. It says, I saw a great white throne. Now this is down toward the end. And uh, this is at the end of time. And him that sat on it from whom, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. They're gone. Everything we know and see down here right now is going to be gone in that day. It's not going to be here. Try to think about that. I can't. I can't conceive it. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Everybody. Everybody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you believe the word of God or whether you don't believe the word of God. You're going to be standing in front of him in that day. You are going to stand there and you are going to give account. It's not my responsibility to try to convince you that you need to believe this or that you need to serve God. It's God's responsibility. But it, you're going to be there whether you believe it or not. So anyway, it says this. He saw the, the, the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. There's two books. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. I believe we're going to give account for what even God's people will give an account for what they've done down here. Now, it's good for us that God loves us. It's good for us that he's, but there's, there's a chastening coming. There's some things that are going to happen that God's going to deal with us about. But, uh, but there are books, and we're, we're going to be judged. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. 
And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Now, now hell here is the grave. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Beloved, this is the book that we need to be written into. And, and in John chapter 3, because Phil kind of alluded this, uh, I don't know if he, if he uh, did this morning, I can't remember, but I know he did down at the, uh, the meeting. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus here, and he's saying, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There is an actual birth that takes place when you bow your knee to Jesus Christ. That God's Spirit will come into you. He will possess you. And then he t tells him again on down, he says, I say to you, except a man be born of water and spirit, he can't enter the kingdom of God. You can't see it and you can't enter it unless God gives you his spirit, unless you are born again by God. But let me tell you something. If you come to God, uh, he goes on down here and he says that whosoever believes in him should, will not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his uh, Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is God's, uh, this is God's reaching out to you today. I don't know where you're at. I don't know... Uh, whether you're in the, a position where you can bow the knee to Jesus Christ. But this is the most important decision you'll ever make. Yes. And in the book of Jude, he says, saving some, pulling them out of the fire. So I, like Phil said, it's not a time to circle the wagons, but it's not a time to, to just go out and do something in ourselves. We need to just be in tune with God every day. Amen. We need to get up, put ourselves in tune with God every day. And when we meet people... Let our, let our speech be seasoned with salt. Let's do what God lays upon our hearts. But this is a time that we need to take seriously. You know, I thought of this uh, last week. I was talking to the Lord, and I said, Lord, we've heard so much about your love. We've heard so much about your graciousness, your patience, your kindness. And all those things are true. But I said, God, we need to know. We need to know all about you. And I believe this is an answer to that prayer. I believe God has met with us this morning. And he's showing us that these things are still in, in his nature. These things are written, and they are going to come to pass. And if it was true for the, for the disciples back then, 2,000 years ago, and they, they talked about it like it was going to happen next week. It could happen next week. If they believe that, how much should, more should we believe it today? It is coming. God has been very patient with this world. 2,000 some years patient. My gosh. Thank you, Lord, for being patient. He's not going to let any of his children perish. I believe that this morning. But I believe this is important. And we need to give heed, the more earnest heed to what we hear this morning. I just praise God for it. I just bless him.